Friedrich Heinrich Jacobi, 1743-1819, born in Dusseldorf, died in Munich. He was made president of the Academy of Sciences at Munich in 1804. These are quotes from his book, Flying Leaves. I too believe on account of miracles, namely on account of the miracle of liberty, which is a continuous miracle and has much analogy with the miracle on which Christendom is founded, the reception of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. Where does nature end? There, where freedom begins. It is precisely this end that I seek. I follow after miracles as others follow after the science, which abolishes miracles. He who makes an end of miracles is not my friend. It is never too late with us, so long as we are still aware of our faults and bear them impatiently, so long as noble propensities, greedy of conquest, stir within us. Every great example takes hold of us with the authority of a miracle and says to us, If ye had but faith, ye should also be able to do the things which I do. To be free and to be a spirit are one and the same. Where spirit is, there is invention, creative power, originality, self-existent. The first and necessary condition of morality the power of acting in obedience to laws is easily confounded with morality itself, which consists in a longing after something higher. The strongest passion in man is ambition. That which satisfies the true ambition promotes the love of God and leads us nearer to the knowledge of him. The greater a man's ability to act for distant ends, the stronger his mind. Man cannot reform himself in detail, nor in general can he keep his promises to himself, for he himself is the sport of passions and only the law above him is constant. That he can acknowledge this law, subject himself to its discipline, in fine, appropriate to himself the love of it and make it a part of his character, therein consists his dignity, and the character of the righteous man is no other than this it is folly to build upon a man who has only disposition though it were the very best without principles whereby to guide this disposition and to govern himself we always live prospectively never retrospectively and there is no abiding moment therefore let us seek internal peace before all things and sacrifice everything to that Every lot is tolerable, only dissatisfaction with ourselves is not tolerable, and there is a degree of remorse from which there is no deliverance. The truly good can be preserved only by means of itself, and all efforts to preserve it by means of anything formal or external to itself, with whatever kind of sugar or salt, are vain i know no deeper philosophy than that of paul in the seventh chapter of his epistle to the romans in the merely natural man dwells sin regeneration is the basis of christianity he who banishes the doctrine of grace from the bible abolishes the whole bible it is ever beneath the dignity of man to give laws merely as the stronger and to rejoice in the pressure which he exercises like a senseless block by mere bulk as if it were a living force the actual right of the stronger consists only in being able to possess himself of the will of the less strong it is with this just as it is with the ruling thoughts and sentiments in our soul true the strongest is always king not the strongest to subject the will of all to himself, so that they shall do his will, though contrary to their own, but the strongest to execute their will, to act in conformity with it. Men will always act according to their passions, therefore the best government is that which inspires the nobler passions and destroys the meaner. 
Justice is the freedom of those who are equal. Injustice is the freedom of those who are unequal. Manage a madhouse as you will. You never can make a rational community out of it. It seems to me as if I should go mad myself when I hear those who only lust after the fruits of slavery raving about freedom. As history is generally written, it is far from giving us a more accurate knowledge of man. On the contrary, it only makes him more unintelligible. And yet the true aim of the historian should be so to represent the different modes of being which are natural to man that we shall recognize them as natural. We cannot return to the old forms and ought not to endeavor to do so, but we can return to the sentiments connected with those forms and they lie very near us. Nothing tends more to bring confusion and death into arts and morals than when men blindly transfer the experience of one age to another. That which man seeks, which everywhere guides him, yea, enlightens him even, is joy. Let him, it is said, seek joy in himself, that is constant, for his self can never desert him false. The eye of today is not the eye of yesterday. The two are often so different that the one knows not how to find itself in the other. His empty form is pure nothing, and the permanent, that in him which is not form, is wholly unknown to him. He seeks himself everywhere in nature and finds himself not. That which he took for himself is only the reflection of something else. That something vanished. It was perishable, and he sank back into his own nothingness. Without repose of soul, nothing great is produced. When little passions are tugging at a man, he can produce only little things, and that only at intervals. Even where strong passion brings great things to pass, there is a kind of repose in the soul. Everything is concentrated upon that one, and the soul reposes on that central point. The French rulers have too high an opinion of man's powers, and too low an opinion of his destination, which makes a strange, repulsive contrast. No tradition assigns a beginning to justice but only to injustice. Before the silver, the brazen, the iron age, there was a golden. Man was at peace with himself. All governments are, to a certain extent, a treaty with the devil. To philosophize is to recollect ourselves on all sides, to defend ourselves against the contradiction which threatens to destroy the unity of our consciousness, our personality, which threatens to kill us. He who would recollect himself outside of sense, outside of all feeling, of all conception, by mere thinking as such, becomes mad. The respect for science as such is entirely the same with that which men have for property, and for that which secures to them its possession. Science incorporates the true, gives it a visible, serviceable body which eats and drinks, and renders service in return. Then the living and philosophical in the science gradually dies out. The spirit which acquired them has vanished. The gatherer is followed by a spendthrift.